You made some fans tonight when you announced that uh, PS4 would be able to play used games and that um, players would be able to trade, loan, keep their discs. Uh, why did you decide to make that decision um, as opposed to going the route that Microsoft took, given that they had made that and that's the competition? Uh, why was that important to Sony? Well, it's our first, fourth generation of hardware, and we've had a great relationship with the consumer, and I think they've responded with tremendous loyalty. It's obviously a model that works well for them, and uh, why, why change something that isn't broken as far as we're concerned? Was that something you gave some thought, though? Did you go back and forth at all in, in terms of considering whether or not you might go that route? Well, I think there's always a debate in the industry about the effects of the aftermarket. I remember many years ago, people thought rental was a threat. People would rent a video game, they'd play it, they'd finish it, and they'd never go out and buy it. And I think in recent years, uh, people have perceived that used games might be a threat. But I think there's also uh, a position that says, number one, it adds to the value for the consumer and their price they're willing to pay for a new copy of a game. Game. Number two, it pumps new dollars into the ecosystem for the consumer and actually puts them in a position to spend uh, more on games if you give them some value for a game that they're done with. And we all know that consumers don't have unlimited dollars, so anything that keeps them in the ecosystem we think is good for gaming. Did you expect that kind of reaction though? I really did. Uh, I, I think that uh, people have spoken very, very loudly when they're not happy and when they are happy. So I don't know that I expected to be vocal at the press conference, but I know the news would have been extremely well received. But it's, it's obvious that people have very strong emotions about it. Um, the emphasis on entertainment that we saw tonight, um, you're Sony, so that, that's to be expected. Um, but wh why is that important, and what will it mean for the consumer's experience with the PS4? Well, I mean, I'd like to think that we brought uh, entertainment beyond gaming into the fray right way back in 1995 with the original PlayStation. At the time, the ability to listen to your CDs on the same device that you played games was a novel concept. And obviously, we, we really had a big hand in the adoption of DVD with PlayStation 2. And then with Blu-ray and PlayStation 3 and the ability to stream all the different partners that we've brought without having to pay an additional fee was something I think really resonated with consumers. And Netflix is a perfect example of a, of a service that's really ubiquitous. It's on just about every device, but to be the number one stream device is a testament to the fact that the entertainment consumer is on our platform. And they not only play a lot of games, they listen to a lot of music, they watch a lot of movies, they go to a lot of concerts, buy a lot of music, so they're a very, very valuable consumer for Sony. And I think that's another key point. People look at the success of a generation based on the number of pieces of hardware you sold. What's important is if people are still playing them and what they're doing with them. And we, we feel that quality is more important than quantity if we had to make a choice. A specific launch date for PS4. We, we heard holiday season, but can you tell us more specific than that? And if not, um, why not? Well, I think the honest answer is that uh, you don't know what your production yields are going to be until you go into production and you see the type of numbers you have. You don't know what the ultimate demand is going to be, and we're trying to roll this out on a worldwide basis. So we want to do it right as opposed to spink, sprinkle a unit here and a, and a unit there. So we've got a lot of evaluation to do. But in my mind, holiday means uh, in the holiday season, uh, but to be more specific would be speculative. And, I, and quite frankly, I think if you have an opportunity to get it before the end of the year, whether you get it in October, November, December is, is somewhat irrelevant because we hope it's something you're going to enjoy for the next 10 years and beyond. So a couple of weeks one way or the other won't make too significant a difference. Uh, a lot of people are pointing out that younger players are gaming on smartphones, tablets. Um, of course, there's the PlayStation Vita. But what are Sony's plans to keep up with, with that trend, with that mobile gaming trend? Well, the beauty of working for Sony is there isn't a business as it relates to entertainment and the gaming choices that you just mentioned that we're not in. We make tablets. We make smartphones. We have PlayStation Mobile. We have games available on the tablet. So I, I think the entire ecosystem is growing. But the misnomer that I think people miss out on is they assume that it's people gravitating from the console to a smartphone or a tablet. I think it's the exact opposite, that people are coming into gaming through devices like smartphones and tablets, and ultimately they migrate their way up the ecosystem. But the audience for the console is stronger than it's ever been. I mean, we believe that there are more consumers out there that have interest uh, in the console initially than we'll be able to manufacture. Uh, there's a huge pool of consumers to tap into, and, and we're excited to bring PlayStation 4 to them. What uh, will be possible that wasn't possible before thanks to PS4? 
Well, I think as the technology grows, the ability to make the experience more and more immersive, to really evoke emotion, to make people scared when they're playing it, excited, uh, mad, uh, and to really get in a relationship with the characters, just like they would with a movie or a TV show. Uh, and I think we've reached the photorealism element that you can tell a story that has the depth uh, that will actually leave somebody in tears, uh, you know, at the end of an experience, and that's something that you know was very, very difficult to admission uh, to to envision many years ago, and why people felt that gaming was a toy because it was something that you know they couldn't relate to. Now, gaming is bigger than box office and movies combined, so clearly, you know, we're mainstream entertainment, and people get that it's an art form. And I think the technology and the creativity in the in the development community has allowed us to rise to that level. Do you have a favorite among the games that uh, you highlighted? Well, you know, the amazing thing is like working in an ice cream parlor, right? You're surrounded by it. So I have a new favorite all the time. Um, and, and, it, and it really depends on, on what time. But the game I'm probably most excited to play right now is The Last of Us. I mean, that just looks incredible. But as soon as I sink my teeth into that, there's a whole list of other games I want to jump into. And I love the indie games. I mean, they're great experiences as well. I mean, great gameplay is great gameplay. Kind of an interesting integration of Hollywood into the game. Is that something you see more of a trend, or you're trying to? Well, having been around the industry for a long time and having devoted my career to it, it's great to see this evolution in the relationship with Hollywood because it used to be when they were making a movie, somebody said, hey, we should pick up some licensing dollars by making a video game uh, that'll come out after the movie's out. And it was really the, the stepchild, uh, if you will, of, of, of the movie relationship. Now, it's the exact opposite, that the uh, creative juices and the creative uh, games that are being created are turning into big budget movies, the games and the movies are being made side by side, a lot of the same technology is being used, and where it might have been an embarrassment for a lead Hollywood actor to be involved in a video game, they seek it out now. I think the same is true of the music industry. People want to be on the soundtrack of a game because they know it can really propel their, their band. So again, proof points for the health of the industry that Hollywood and the music industry flock to gaming, and uh, that's a big change from the way it was you know, just 10 or maybe even 20 years ago. And because of that shift, do you think it's bringing more gamers into the, you know, bringing more people to gaming? Because they're seeing, you know, oh, you know, maybe they're Ellen Page fans. Maybe they, you know, Sar and Juno or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it brings people in in a number of different ways. I think the key is just to demystify it. I think people look at a controller and they see all those buttons and they say, I'd, I'd never be able to control it. And that's one of the things that I think we, we owe a debt of gratitude to smartphones and tablets because it's a real easy interface. But once you get used to it and you demystify it a little bit, you know, you're not so intimidated by the controller. So like I said earlier, you migrate up that uh, system. But I, I think, you know, the key is to bring something that catches people eye, people's eye and they say, you know, what is that? I, I'd like to check that out. And, you know, characters like Ellen Page and William Defoe certainly add uh, the relevance and the credibility that a non-gamer, um, you know, certainly would, would be drawn to if they weren't a gamer already. You're never too old to game? Never too old to game. Mm -hmm.